Just the other day I was sitting at my PC, minding my own business and having a think about what videos I might do next. And it was at that moment that an email from AMD came through revealing some rather unexpected details about their upcoming Threadripper CPUs. There was also some info about the soon to be released Ryzen 3 CPUs as well, but I was less interested in that. It's not hard to imagine how that launch is going to turn out. I'll discuss that a little bit later on. Anyway, getting back to Threadripper, the exciting one. Uh, so the highlights there included the clock speeds and the pricing. I was very surprised that AMD revealed pricing information so soon. They like to build hype now well in advance of a product release. Traditionally, we sort of get the pricing a day before the review goes live. So we have a couple of days to get the review ready. We're trying to write the conclusion and we don't know what the price is. So it makes it very difficult, but we have the pricing. So thank you, AMD. Uh, the the uh, Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, and yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, is set to come in at just $1,000 US, the same price as the Core i9-7900X. You might ask, why is that a big deal? Well, while Intel's offering a 10-core 20-thread CPU at that price, AMD is serving up a 16-core 32 Monster at 60% more cores for the same price. AMD also announced some details for a Threadripper 1920X model, uh, and that's a slightly more affordable 12-core 24-thread CPU for $800 US. Now, both of these CPUs are said to operate at a maximum boost frequency of 4 GHz, and I have to say, that's amazing news. The 1950X sports a base frequency of 3.4 GHz, which is still very respectable, while the 1920X should run no slower than 3.5 GHz. I should note, though, that we don't know what the all-core turbo frequencies are just yet, and we don't know how many cores will boost to the maximum 4 GHz. Those clock speed specifications complemented what we already knew about the upcoming Threadripper CPUs. But to quickly recap, each Threadripper CPU packs two Zeppelin dies, and they're the same dies you'll find in the Epic server grade chips. They use four, of course, to allow for 32 cores and 64 threads. Each Zeppelin die provides 32 Gen 3 PCIe lanes for a total of 64 lanes. Uh, so you can pretty much connect up as many graphics cards and high-speed NVMe storage devices as you wish without running into any bandwidth limitations. Within a Zeppelin die, there are two CCX modules. So technically Threadripper is just two Ryzen CPUs stitched together or glued together as Intel would so eloquently put it. Uh, actually, glued Intel, that's a bit strange. They are using fabric here, so I would believe stitching is the preferred method. Anyway, in total there are four CCX units, each offering four cores and eight threads, and essentially this means you can double pretty much everything Ryzen 7 has, which enables a massive 32 megabyte level 3 cache and support for quad channel memory. As you might imagine, sticking two Ryzen CPUs together is going to make for one massive CPU. And that's exactly what Threadripper is, an absolutely massive CPU. As such, AMD had to design a new platform to accommodate the behemoth, and that will be supported by the cunningly named X399 chipset. The new TR4 socket uses LAN grid array surface mount packaging, commonly referred to as LGA. And this means unlike Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, there are no pins on the actual CPUs. Rather, the pins have been moved over to the motherboard, and this is the same method Intel's been using for quite a few years now. However, whereas Intel's latest high-end desktop CPUs utilize 2,066 pins, Threadripper demands an incredible 4,094 pins. Such an extreme desktop platform demands a new name, so superseding Intel's high-end desktop, or HEDT, we now have SHED, or S-H-E-D, uh, which is short for super high-end desktop. AMD's also said that the Threadripper CPUs will become available in early August, which is great news, but there was no mention of a 10-core part, uh, at least at this stage. So this means you'll be able to buy one of AMD's super high-end desktop processors very soon for a very reasonable price. But the question is, should you? Uh, obviously, we can't really answer that question till we fully test Threadripper. But as it stands right now, potential buyers do have the option to just pull the trigger on the Core i9-7900X and call it a day rather than wait for Threadripper. And as always, with a new product incoming, I highly recommend you don't do that. Helping you hold off, AMD did run a quick Cinebench R15 demo featuring both Threadripper models and compared the results to the Core i9-7900X. The 7900X scored 2,167 points, which is... Consistent with my own findings, I reported a score of 2,201 points in my review, and I'd say that's within the margin of error. It's like 2% or something. 
The 12 core 1920 expat had an impressive score of 2,431 points. And to match that, the 7900X would need to be overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz, where it consumes an awful amount of power. Uh, pretty much enough to embarrass your wall heater. Then the big guy, the 1950X, that turned in an absolutely incredible score of 3,062 points. And while breathtaking, wasn't entirely surprising given that the 1800X manages around 1,600 points. Still, this means for workloads that do utilize or can utilize the 1950X's many cores, uh, it should be around 40% faster than the Core i9-7900X. That, quite frankly, is a massive performance difference for a CPU of the same price. So should you wait a few weeks for Threadripper before making your ultimate choice? Uh, hells yeah. As I see it, AMD really has Intel in a serious spot of bother with these high core count CPUs. When it comes to gaming, there's still no question that the quad core, Core i7 7700K, still rules them all. For now, anyway. This, however, goes beyond gaming. Anyone seeking a CPU with eight cores or more probably isn't gaming, or at least they're not just gaming. And when we talk about 10 core CPUs such as the 7100X, gaming really isn't a consideration. And this is, of course, true for the 12 core and 16 core Threadripper CPUs as well. So if you're not gaming, I know it's hard to imagine, uh, and you do require a high core count CPU for things such as encoding and rendering, for example, then you really do want as many cores as you can afford. And as we just saw with Cinebench, AMD's higher core count 1950X takes the 7900X to the cleaners, and again, for the same price. Of course, we are yet to test Ripper for ourselves, uh, but given what we know about Ryzen 7 and Intel's Core X lineup, I just don't see how Intel can compete uh, in the current high-end desktop market given their current pricing strategy. As a side note, I would like to know if the 12 core model features the same 32 megabyte level three cache as the 16 core model, that wasn't made clear. I assume it does, but we won't know for sure until AMD confirms it. They also haven't confirmed the CCX configuration for the 12 core model. Again, I'd assume we're looking at three cores per CCX, but again, AMD hasn't confirmed this. We also don't know what the official DDR4 memory support is yet. Again, I'd assume DDR4 2666 based on what we've seen from Ryzen so far. And it has been suggested that the CPUs will support an insane one terabytes of memory. So yeah, that's pretty crazy for a desktop CPU. Uh, finally, I'm not sure if the CPUs come bundled with a cooler or not, uh, or if existing coolers can be adapted to the new socket, so we'll have to wait to find out that as well. Finally, AMD also announced the Ryzen 3 1300 and 1200. Uh, the 1300 will operate at a base frequency of 3.5 GHz with a turbo of 3.7 GHz, while the 1200 will run at 3.1 GHz with a turbo of 3.4 GHz. No pricing info was given, but AMD says these CPUs will be available next week on the 27th. And I'll throw up a graph with a few more specs about the CPUs, but basically you're looking at what I believe a, is a Ryzen 5 1400 with SMT disabled. Anyway, before Ryzen is officially released, I will be doing a simulated Ryzen 3 benchmark video uh, to check out how these chips perform. And I'll be using the Ryzen 5 1400 with SMT disabled, so there should be really no surprises there. As it turns out, I'd actually gathered the results about a week ago and was planning on doing the video uh, pretty much early this week. They've made the announcement, so yeah, uh, didn't really go to plan and I didn't realize they'd be released the week after uh, the announcement, but whatever, I'll still release my simulated benchmarks because they are very telling and I believe them to be very accurate. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. If you liked the video, then please take a moment to help us out and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell to grab yourself some freshly processed content. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.